Hello, and welcome to Lecture 9. We learned from the last lecture the importance of decision-making programs. In this lecture, we are going to show you an example of it. More specifically, we are going to build a password system. So let's get started. Let me first switch to the code. Since we have done this so many times already, I'm going to start with a pre-made frame. This frame should look relatively familiar to you. You create a window with root equals tk. You create a label with the label command. You create an entry box with the entry command. And you create a button with the button command. When the button is pressed, it calls the function get value. Inside the function, it gets the value inside the entry box and prints it out. Let me quickly run this program so you can see what we have created. Okay, you see how here's the label we created? Below the label, we create an entry box. And lastly, we create a button at the bottom. When you press the button, it calls the function get value and prints out whatever we have in the entry box. Pretty easy, huh? So if I type in the name Dale and press the button, you will see the name Dale pop up. int.get gets the value inside the entry box and equate it with the password. And lastly, we print out the password. We have done an identical code in one of the previous classes. Take a second to look at the code to make sure you understand it fine. Now that we have this structure, what we want to do is check if the password is correct. But first of all, what is the password? Hmm, can I trust you with this information? Hmm, I don't know if I can trust you with this information. Okay, quick. The password is... The name of the female character in Seinfeld. Anyway, with this password, we're going to be able to check if the password is correct. Instead of print pass out, we're going to check if it's correct. We will write this command. If password is equal to Elaine, then print out you have the correct password. Or else print out you don't have the correct password. Let's run the program and see the magic. Okay. If I type in my name Che, notice how I didn't get the correct password. What if I try the name Debbie or Carl? Notice how nothing worked. Now, we can try the correct password by typing Elaine. <laughs> by now, you might be wondering why the equal sign we have two of it, a double equal sign. You need two equal signs because we use the equal sign for something else. You see, when you use only one equal sign, it means that you're assigning a value to a variable. For example, if you write number equals to four, this statement makes number equal to four. This is called an assignment. You assign the number four to number. But if you have something like this, number double equals 4, now this becomes a question. Number equals to 4? True or false? If it's true, number equals to 4. If it's false, number doesn't equal to 4. Let's say we create a second number that equals to 2. Number 2 equals to 2. Now, if we check if the first number and the second number are equal, we will see that it returns false. Number equals to number 2. Notice since that they are different, it returns false. You want to make sure you pay attention to this since it will cause you very big problems in the future. So if you go back to the if statement, the if statement sees that if this expression is true or false. That's what it's checking. If it's true, then it keeps going. If it's false, then it jumps to else. Before I get sidetracked too much, 
Let me return to our Elaine program. Just printing out that we got the password is not that exciting. So why don't we make some changes to the button? If we get the right password, I say we make the button yellow. Yeah, yellow. This could be easily done with this command. Button background is equal to yellow. By the way, this command works for anything else you want to change. You start with the name of the button. What you want to change inside the brackets and what you want to change to after the equate sign. 